of the train. Welcome to my Trains and World Class 66 Diesel Electric Locomotive Tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to drive this magnificent diesel electric beast. So the first thing we've got to do is once the battery has been isolated, go to the nearest fuel port tank where we can check the fuel levels. Here we can see that it's 100% on. If we needed to top up, we can simply pull off the cap. Now let me quickly find a ledge to climb back on the platform. Uh, no, it doesn't appear to be a ledge, I'm sorry about the small delay. Where's the silly ledge? Here it is. Okay, so first thing we've got to do once that's been done is head into the cab that we're going to be driving from. So head in and get in the cab. Okay. Then we open up the fuse boxes and you can tell that everything has been isolated because the three is emergency isolation lights have been illuminated and then everything has got the isolation lights, safety systems isolation. Everything has been isolated using the fuses. So first we're just going to turn on all the auxiliary fuses and that's us done with that cabinet and then we're going to sort out the second one so first we're going to unisolate all the vital things for, for example fire detection, iso detection isolation switch and you can see that the third light's already gone out because that's a, a really important safety system and then we run uh, all the important things such as pre lubrication radio gps event recorder and then we want these fuel systems and then all the engine turb uh, all the engine systems okay now the cab is in can be now operated but we're going to finish doing all the isolation switches which are not the important ones so etcs headlights tail lights dryers and head, head uh, windshield uh, heaters and safety systems. So that should be all of the fuses gone up. Indeed. So we're done with that. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna sit down in our driver's seat. There we go. Right. You can see that we've got no warning lights in this little panel here. Not this little panel. Sorry. This. Uh, means now forget it. Can't we want it? This in in here where the three lights were gone. Now they're all extinguished because all the safety systems have been unisolated. So the max speed is 75 miles an hour, and this is the number one cab because it's got the fuse fuses. Okay, so we sit down. If we were to need the cab light, we can switch it on, and I'm going to make the most of it and get some lights on. Okay, right. Uh, we need two. Put, if we want to, which I am, I'm going to put on my instrument lights. There we go. And we're ready. So the first thing we're going to do in order to start this locomotive is put these systems, these switches on. There we go. The three of them are on. You, we need to disable them if you want to change cab. Keep the first one down because that's what's going to allow you to start the engine. Check that the knob of the engine stop is released. As you just saw, somebody had left it pressed. Okay, now, the locomotive, I'm going to turn off the cab light, is going to press its buzzer, as it's going to sound its buzzer as we start the engine. So there's no need to blast our horn. So we can start the engine by pressing this green button, the engine start top button. There we go, the engine will start gathering revs. Okay, the locomotive has been started, so we can press this into run. There we go. The locomotive is now ready. So now, we can set our headlights, which is going to be today for daytime. And we're going to set our taillights up, because we're running light loco for the moment. And insert the master key, which is going to give us the AWS self-test. Which we can acknowledge. There you go. 
and now we're gonna uh, release the automatic brake which as you can see has already got some air pressure in it although it shouldn't so we're now charging the brakes there you go the brakes have now been charged there and we're gonna set the direct brake to hold the locomotive while we release the handbrake using this red button and now that says off so now we're ready to, to move I'm gonna close up my cab door because that's still open if we wanted to couple up to another multiple unit or locomotive or set of coaches we can operate this Buckeye release bar which is can release our Buckeye front and back and then slam it back okay so we're gonna have to release our brakes and we're going to couple up to this set to this rake of wagons so as you can see we've got day headlights and uh, i'll just show you what night headlights look like so this is day this is night there you go and at the back we've got tails okay so we're gonna um swap window get my head out the window, put it in reverse, release the brakes and I forgot to do something very important before we put it in reverse go to the EM2000 check go to the main menu and we've got to go to the traction cutout well first traction cutout and check what it says there we go all the traction motors are currently cut out so we're going to enable them all so that we they all work together so all the traction motors have been enabled there we go so now we have traction on all the motors and now we're going to go to brake cutout and cut in our brakes and given we're going to be cu coupling up to some freight we're going to go to brake timing and we're going to use goods and then we're going to if we wanted to swap some units we can always go here to English metric and it will tell us that all this is displayed in that and then if we go to unit information it will give us oops there you go if we go to unit information it gives us the DB Schenker 66099 unit which we're running in the EM2000 ID which is not filled in the time the date and the fuel we've got in currently and then also we've got a uh, slow speed which allows us to run the locomotive in a preset slow so it says SSC mode which means slow speed control mode and then finally we've got data meters here which it just tells me for example if I notch up the power it tells me what notch I'm in and the revs I'm getting there we go so we're gonna exit that and we're gonna go to crew what? okay uh, if I if I just got to check that my what crew information it says so I can go now and it says parking brake is released so now I'm going to reset that go back to crew uh, crew yeah it hasn't got any crew messages so we're going to pop our head out the window release the brakes blast the horn and notch one on the power and actually just to demonstrate I'm going to use the slow speed control okay so the first thing we must do is set the reverser to neutral then in this this little switch we flip it forwards so the locomotive is now in slow speed control mode so now we go to slow speed and select that and it says reverse the handle to direction of travel so we're going to set it to reverse and then we're going to set we're going to start it at wait a minute but first we're going to actually put some speed into it so we're going to put I don't know two miles an hour and then we're going to go to start release the brakes give it a notch of power and I'm not sure it will work in the reverse but you can see the speeds coming up and it will slowly build up until in theory reaches 
three, well, two miles an hour. So I'm going to get my head out of the window and we're going to actually, I'm going to pretend to be lying. Oh, there's an HST high speed train, which is currently, no, forget it, forget it. Okay, so in theory, the train should, there we go. See, slow speed control has now been activated. So if I now go to, as I was showing you before, how to use the M2000, it's not something you use a lot, but I'm just showing, showing it to you so that you see how it works. If I now go to data meters, you can see the engine's kind of revving up, slowing down itself. There you go. And it's kind of telling you what it's doing for me so that I'm just going to use my map to know when I'm going to hit the wagons. So if I was just now to put that in idle, everything would stop. Okay, so I'm going to put it back to one. And I'm going to go to the eight camera so that I can see when I'm going to hit the wagons. There we go. And we're going to cut off the power now. And prepare to hit the wagons. There we go. And couple up. Before we couple up, we're just going to um, go. Uh, so we want to exit. Just go back to slow speed. And now we want to turn off slow speed control I think that's no other way around so we've got to before you turn off the slow speed control disable slow speed on the EM2000 so you've got to press stop and then you disable it here go back to the EM2000 and it says exit so you just exit there we go so now we're just ready we um, apply the brakes put it in neutral uh, turn off the tail lights because we're now got a consist Oops. I appear to be stuck there we go okay so now we're going to couple up the loco release our direct brake and from now on we'll be using the train brake there you go as you can see the train pipe is now charging Now the train's releasing its brakes as the train pipe charges. Oh, I don't think I'm doing that. And once the brakes have released, we've got permission to depart. So there's a class 166 diesel hydraulic multiple unit. If you want to, me to show you how to drive that one, leave it a, a comment in the description below. Okay, now we're ready to uh, start moving because our brakes have released. So we put it in forwards and notch up to notch one. I'm just going to sort my window again. There we go. Put it into notch two. And I'm actually going to show you yet again with the EM2000 how this is working. So you can see, if now I was to throttle up to notch 8, the RPM are gonna, is going to go haywire and everything is going to go really far up. But I'm bringing that right back to notch 2. There you go. And we now, if you needed um, to turn the blinds down, you can. If you need to turn on the wipers, it works exactly the same. There you go. And turn them off again. This signal indicates that we're going to branch off. Not a notch of power. Okay. Uh, now we've also down here we've got the hazard button, which as you can see at the front is using our hazard lights. But it will, they will soon come off. There you go, they come off already. And then you've got the emergency brake valve and the slow speed control, which I'm going to set back to nil miles an hour. There we go. And the train length button, which I don't know how it works. And then the emergency brake valve, which I'll show you how it works on the way. So now I'm going to notch up to notch four. And 
now we're going to just notch her up to full power. There we go, feel her pull her load. So, there's two types of emergency stops we can occur. There's going to be a TPWS train stop, which will illuminate that light. And then we're going to um, also have voluntary emergency stops, that's an AWS clear. There we go. Um, which we're going to cause one once we pass the speed limit. So, once we've passed this turbo network, which is actually just gone past this junction because it's probably waiting for us. With FK container train. There we go. So now we're limited to 75 miles an hour. Getting a bit of. There we go. We've got a fuel diver and we're now carrying on speeding up. By the way, I didn't show you, but this door leads to the same style door. Okay. So, once we've got ourselves to 50 miles an hour, 60 actually, I'm going to be demonstrating how to pull the emergency brake. There we go. I'm pulling. That's a DSD. DVD, sorry, and there's another 166. This is in 2012, by the way. There we go. So now... Oh, there we go. There it pulls by. It's quite a lot faster than we are. There we go. So, once we've got to 60 miles an hour, I'll be demonstrating how to pull an emergency brake. So, of course, you pull an emergency brake if there's something causing you, for example, somebody on the track, an object on the track, or anything of the same style. So, now, when we reach the next signal, I'm going to show you, evidently, um, if you see something, the first thing you're going to do you stamp your hand on that little button there, which is the emergency brake. Before, there's an HST by the way. Before you do anything else, just slam your hand on the emergency brake. So, as, as I've just seen now an imaginary person on the track, so I'm going to slam the emergency brake down. Emergency, so I'm going to pull the throttle back to zero. You can feel the brakes really pulling on now because we've got a zero brake pipe pressure and the there we go and we've come back to complete standstill there we go if we wanted to recover it's as easy as putting the reverse to neutral releasing the button and charging the brakes again so thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and i'll see you in the next one